Hi guys, in this video we're going to unbox the Elma Solvex SE machine. We'll check it over to see whether everything works as it should do. We'll have a good look at the machine and we'll also test it how it performs. When I received it the first time I was able to use it but I found a few areas on parts that were not very clean. We'll have to test that. The previous two times it arrived damaged and I made a video about what was damaged, how it was handled, how long it took etc. If you've not seen it, check it out, the link is in the description. And today, third time lucky, it better be. I ordered the machine on the 15th of March and it was delivered the next day on the 16th of March. The third delivery, what we're watching now, was on the 3rd of October. Yep, I've not been able to use it for over six months. All this packaging you see now, that's not packed like this by Elma. The supplier reinforced it because Elma's packaging is not adequate and they've done a good job. This is far, far better than the previous two shipments. Before it was just the box, no cellophane, none of the cardboard L plates on the corners of the box, no nylon straps, nothing like that. What is frustrating, that this only happened after I made the previous video. That's when Elma eventually got involved. That should have happened straight away when I received it in March. Not to be told on the 31st of August by Elma that they are going to send me a new machine. Six months. Six months. You buy a watch cleaning machine to speed up your workflow. As an example, this is not my scenario and I'll make the example easy for calculations. You do 10 watches less a month because you don't have a watch cleaning machine. And let's say it's £200 per watch. That's £2,000 a month. If I didn't make the previous video, I probably still wouldn't have the machine and most likely I wouldn't be getting a new one. That's my experience with Elma. Now let's get on with the unboxing. We've got an extra cardboard here. That's not normally there. The supplier added that for extra protection. That's a checklist from the supplier. You don't normally get that either. You get this styrene on top from Elma. And you don't get this much bubble wrap inside either. Again, the supplier added that in to protect the machine as much as they could. You get this box with jars, sealed. This one is opened and what we have inside are the jars, individually boxed. Normally, you get the power cord and the four jars in this box. My previous two deliveries, the jars that I've broken. The jar is fine, in its own box and some foam inside. That's how it should be done. The other jar, no problem at all, it's in one piece. Here we have the manual and the power cord. Lots and lots of bubble wrap. I like that. This is the type you get from Elma. Not a lot of it in the box, but I think there is more this time. Still not enough. And here's a bag from Elma. You don't normally get that. So what do we have in the bag? Hard bag. I'm not sure what it is. Let's have a look. A drawing pad. Hard back one. There's more, a mouse pad, and there's more, we get an Elma mug, and there's something else there, lanyards, Elma lanyards, and here's another box, also opened, and we get two more jars, they feel fine, I'll open it later and let you know if there's something wrong, but it feels good. You don't normally get the bag with the Elma promotional stuff. I guess I get that because I'm getting the machine six months late. What is not there, and you will get, is the basket frame with three baskets and one mini basket. I already have that, so it's not in this box, but you will get that. Now let's have a look at it from the top. I think there should be styrene or some kind of foam on the sides to stop it from moving during transport, not just the top and bottom. The way it's currently packaged is not good enough, not for the weight of the machine and the price of the machine. I think the first time I received it in March, it was turned upside down during transport which didn't do it any good. I'll show you later why I think that's what happened. You can see here the box got hit but the added L plate protected it. And on the top and bottom of the box there were L plates as well, two layers. If you buy this machine, you should contact the supplier, ask them to open it to check it over and if all is okay, ask them to reinforce it. Now let me move the machine elsewhere and let's have a look at it whether I'm third time lucky and everything works as it should do. Let's switch it on. I want to test the rotation speed. Last time I had it, it wasn't responding well. The speed would drop, then it wasn't speeding up, then it would suddenly kick in, 
it was all over the place, there was no control over it. Something to do with the speed knob, it wasn't making a contact. I eventually found that when I pushed the knob down, it would work, but you can't stand there for 20-30 minutes pressing it constantly down. All I want to do now is to increase and decrease the rotation speed, give it a test and see whether it works well. That's responding nicely. Increasing and decreasing the speed with no issues. I can slow it right down. It's good. None of the problems I had before. Now let's have a look at the heater. It's straightforward. Lower it down. Set the timer. Set the rotation speed. Switch the heating on and leave it running. I'll switch it off manually, there are no parts in the basket, it's just for you to see it. It would have been nice if there was a cover for the heating chamber to keep the dust away, but you can put something on it. I bought the shower curtain and I cover the whole machine when it's not in use. I have some reservations about the knobs. I would much prefer if Elma instead of the rotation speed being 0 to 100% was the actual speed. The manual states it goes up to 1200 RPM and the numbers from 1 to 12 would have been a lot more practical. If you look at Omega working instructions, they tell you to have it at 200 to 300 RPM. Markers on the knobs would be nice too, not just the numbers. Also, on the old machines, the knobs were facing you. This machine, they are on the top of the arm that swings more than 180 degrees and you kind of have to twist your body when you're selecting the time and the rotation for the first jar and the heater. Not a deal breaker, it's doable, just a little awkward. The operating handle, the blue part is fixed and the silver part is movable. You press the silver part, slide the handle and it will lock itself in the position where you're moving it. Here I want you to observe the gap between the blue plastic and the metal. See how equal it is? It's nicely aligned, it's parallel. This is the unit I received before this machine I have now. See the difference? This one is not straight. I can only assume that it was turned upside down during transport and it got bent. Something I'd check if you buy this machine. In the previous video, I mentioned that it seemed to me that the parts were cleaner when I cleaned them in the Elma Ultrasonic rather than the machine. But that was a different unit, so let's test this machine and have a look at it under macro. This reduction wheel had a full cycle, as per the manual, 35% speed in the ammoniated solution for 5 minutes etc, up to the drying, a full cycle. And as you can see, it's not perfectly clean. It's the Seiko S4 grease, the movement has never been used. It never was in a watch. I have several of these inexpensive movements for testing and parts. Ok, the S4 grease is thick and sticky, but this is not even a used movement. And here we have a Rolex main plate. Again, the train was assembled, greased and oiled and disassembled, only around for a short period of time. And we have remains of Mobius 9501 there, where the minute pinion was. I'm going to do a little test. I put some Kluber P125 grease on the jewel on the left, and some of the Seiko S4 on the jewel on the right. I did my best, it's in the jewel holes and even between the jewels and the plate. I'll use the same solutions and follow the cycle in the Elma manual. And I'll put the reduction wheel in the wash once again. And that came out spotless, so fresh grease, no problem at all. But the reduction wheel, that remains the same. Ok, I'll carry on testing with the reduction wheel. This time I'll use non-ammoniated solution, but I'll leave it in the bath for 15 minutes. 35% speed, everything else as per the manual, but instead of the first jar 5 minutes, I'll do 15 minutes. And as you can see, it's still not clean, so a different solution and the 15 minute bath didn't help it. I'm going to do another test. I have Renata Essence here, so I'm going to soak the reduction wheel in the fluid for 30 minutes, then put it through the full cycle in the machine. In the ammoniated solution, 5 minutes, 3 rinses, spin-offs and drying. I know I could easily take it off with pegwood, a brush or rodico, but I'm trying to avoid manual handling. Parts like to fly when you handle them. I could live with placing the parts in the fluid during disassembly instead of the dust tray if it works. 
and sadly that didn't work. What we're going to do next is try exactly the same thing but instead of the Renata let's try some isopropyl alcohol. This method would not be good for parts with shellac or bridges with letter in that are some print there but it would be okay for most parts so let's give that a go. And as we all expected it didn't help. I didn't have much hope for either of the methods but you've got to try, now we know. So what's next? I decided to buy Elma's own fluids, the WF Pro and the Super All Pro. I'll give it the full cycle, 5 minutes in the first bath and we'll see whether the fluids are better at cleaning than the LNR fluids. I was hoping that the Elma fluids would be better but unfortunately they are not. I can't think of anything else than doing it manually now to get rid of it. I'll use an artist brush, the Renata Essence and I'm sure that will work. I'm sorry it's a little blurred, the camera was set for stills and it does record video when you press the video button but the depth of field is a lot more shallow so let me blend it to the video recording, that's much better. And of course that worked, it took it all off. I'm disappointed, I didn't want to start cleaning by hand. The purpose of this purchase was to avoid a standalone ultrasonic and speed up the workflow but it looks like that's what will have to be done with some parts. I don't know how it's going to be with dirty movements, this was only a test movement that's never been in a watch. Probably the best and quickest solution, the basket frame with the three baskets fits nicely in the Elma jar for the ultrasonic, the one I have. I never had these issues when I was using the ultrasonic, the parts were always spotless, so instead of using the first bath with the cleaning fluid, I could put it in the ultrasonic for 5 minutes, then attach it to the machine, spin off the fluid, give it the 3 rinses, dry in and that should come out nice and clean. It will be a little messy but it will work. So I don't know what to think guys, maybe I'm doing something wrong but I don't think so. I'm following the Elma manual, 35% speed in the fluids, first bath 5 minutes, the other 3 3 minutes, the spin offs 2 minutes. I even bought the fluids and it was a waste of money. Not that they are bad, I'm not saying that. It was a waste of money because I have the LNR fluids. Now I also have the Elma which I didn't need. I contacted Elma on the 10th of October, emailed them the image of the reduction wheel, told them which fluids I was using, told them I would be making a video and said that I didn't want to make the video until I have it right so you all know what to do. I also asked them about the RPM of the machine. I want to know what the percentages relate to. I got a reply the same day that my email was handed to a technical expert and support professional. Two days later, 12th of October, I emailed them that nobody contacted me. Six days later, on the 18th of October, I got a reply that they would check. It's the 28th of October now and I've heard nothing. They know I'm making a video. They know I have issues, but no response. It makes me think they don't have a solution. Personally, this is just my opinion. It's a limitation of the machine not being ultrasonic. If you look at the VA machine, that's ultrasonic. Same for the Grainer and the Lithids and some others. So even if you buy the RM machine, you will most probably have the same problem. Same jars, same wave breakers, no ultrasonic. The difference between the SC and the RM machines is that the RM is automated. There is no difference in the cleaning process as far as I can see. I have three pieces of the equipment. This machine, the ultrasonic and a demagnetizer. The ultrasonic, it's brilliant, cleans beautifully. Parts or whatever you'll use it for, it's perfect. It goes on and on and on. None of the six minutes limit you get with the inexpensive ultrasonics. I've had it for years, used it extensively and it's flawless. If you're after an ultrasonic, I would certainly recommend Elma. The demagnetizer, again, I've had it for years and it's absolutely fine. So they make good products, but this machine is a disappointment for me. I'll keep it. I'll probably use the ultrasonic for the first clean and then use the machine for the spin-offs, rinses and drying, but it's not what I expected to do. It wasn't a good experience. I eventually got a new machine after I published the video. Not when they were informed it arrived damaged. Six months loss of revenue and the cleaning performance is, well, you've seen it. To wrap it up, they make good products. Don't disregard Elma. But this machine is disappointing. And also the customer service is disappointing. When you receive a damaged product, you want a replacement, quickly. 
You don't want a repaired machine and wait for months. You don't want to start wasting your time making videos to make them do something about it. Sorry guys, it wasn't the happiest video, but if you're thinking of spending close to 3 grand, you want to know what you're getting, and this is what I got.